So basically today we're gonna go over browser bots. Essentially what we're gonna be doing today is reviewing like kind of A, what are browser bots, B, what can they do, and C, go through a couple examples. So that's pretty much like the gist of the agenda. Like I said, I don't think it will take the full 30 minutes, but to start off with like, what is a browser bot? A browser bot is essentially a tool that can be used where you teach it what to do using your browser. So essentially it's putting together a robot and saying, hello robot, go click this button and then click this button and then click this one and do all, do that however many times you want it to do that. And you can even add things in there like wait times if you want to wait for the uh, the page to load or you know anything really like that. Like you can add in all these different features. You don't have to know how to code. There are many free versions of browser bots that can be used. Um, and they have also like specialized browser bots too that like already know kind of what you're trying to tell it to do. And so you don't have to go in and figure out how to get it to, to do the stuff, which is sometimes challenging, but not always. So Nico is a big fan of a browser bot called, uh, I have it up actually, a browser bot called Data Miner. He uses it largely for data mining and data scraping. That's one use. Um, I have a couple browser bots I do that do more like automated tasks because I just think they're kind of annoying to go and click the button 10,000 times. So we'll go through a couple examples of those, but quickly, I want to just overview like how a browser bot works. So I actually really like the way that, uh, data miner on their website lays out about like using their platform specifically, but it applies to pretty much all of them. So there's a couple things to consider. Number one is like permissions and legality and like viewership and everything as associated with these browser bots. First thing is like data scraping is totally legal. If it's a public, if it's publicly available information on a web page, there is no issue with scraping it. Um, in terms of like, if you need a login to access a site to be able to scrape the data, that's still actually legal in most places, terms and conditions, you're still allowed to copy and use data from an individual site. Um, most places just don't make it easy to go through and export that data. They just don't have an export button or they don't make it easy for you to do that because they don't necessarily want you to, but it's not illegal and it doesn't break their rules for the most part. So in terms of like privacy, one thing that's important to consider is if you need a login to be able to do something, that can be a challenge for some browser bots. So it just kind of depends on how you do it. With data miner specifically, that's not an issue because you have to log in and open that browser. So for them, it, it's not an issue of like logging in abilities. Um, for others, if you want to just be able to say, hey, go to this website at this time and do this thing, some do allow for the option to like log you in. You'll still need accounts and stuff, but some do have the option to go in, log you in themselves and figure, go, you know, click the capture or whatever, um, verify that they're a person. Basically like data mining is cool. Browser bots are really useful. You can have them do specific tasks. You can have them just pull information off of the page and store that information elsewhere. Basically it's using a browser you already have. Also one important note is typically you need to have that browser open. Some browser bots do require you to basically not use your computer at all um, while they're doing their stuff. So keep that in mind that it depends a lot on the browser bot you use. We're going to go through examples of two different ones. Uh, some pretty common functions that we use are going and looking at uh, browser extensions for these browser bots. That's definitely one of the most common ways to use it. Uh, I can also give you guys an example of like a real life example of how 
my brother actually coded his own browser bot. None of the browser bots we're going to go through require coding. Um, but my brother went through, coded his own because he got bored at his job and he basically gave it a couple parameters of like, these are jobs I would want. This is the industry. This is the location I'd be willing to go to. He's a mechanical engineer. And he basically just set up a bot to go while he was at work. And then it would, every time it got to a question, it didn't know how to answer. It would just text him and he would text back and then it would store that in a database and then automatically fill in the answers from there. So that's a very advanced example. We're not going to go that deep, but, um, let's go through kind of a sample of one really simple browser bot, right? So I have this one, it automatically will go and invite people who like a post on a Facebook page and it will invite them to like the page if they haven't already. So it's pretty easy. In this case, it gives pretty specific examples. All you have to do is you just have to click this, open this up, and it's just annoying to go through like 60 people or whatever and click invite for all of them. So we just click this up here, let the browser bot do its thing. I'm not going to touch anything. You can see my hands this whole time. Um, and it's going to go through and every time it sees one that we can invite, it's going to invite them and it's going to go through this whole list. This is particularly useful for things that we have, like, let's say we have a post of theirs that maybe has like two or 300 likes. It is a gigantic pain in the ass to uh, go through and have that, like, and be individually inviting all those people. And there are very few really easy ways to do it. So because it's just a pain in the ass and because I'm lazy by nature, I wanted to find an easier way. This is the easiest way is to have a robot do it. So you'll notice this has a lot of the things I was talking about earlier. Like this says, do not use Facebook. Do not change the tab. Basically like it's mimicking a uh, human, human action to go through this whole list, search for the ones and click it. That's important because how a lot of websites uh, basically display your own actions. They don't necessarily like it when you use bots a lot of the time, which, which makes sense in a lot of circumstances. Um, they don't necessarily like when you use bots. So for example, you'll see there's like almost 300 likes on this post and there's people that need to be invited. So if we just click this, we don't have to worry about it because I don't want to be the one to scroll through all 300 of these. So this is really the value of browser bots. This is one that like does a specific action. We're going to go and test one where like, uh, it's a little bit more programmable. So like this one, I can't make it do anything other than invite people who liked a Facebook post. I can't make it do anything. They have other options. And they have like other other bots that they've created and scripts. But for us to be able to utilize those, we have to kind of fit within their narrow parameters. There's a lot of browser bots like that. So if you have a specific task that you just personally really find annoying, um, there might be a specific browser bot already built for you. I'm a big believer in like no need to recreate the wheel. So if it already exists, and especially if it's like a free Chrome extension, why not use it, right? So as you guys are thinking about your common tasks, like that's one thing I would encourage you to look at. And then I will also attach at the end of our training a more specific example that Nico has gone through and done in the past about like how he uses data miner, for example. Let's go into a slightly more complex example. So we are going to just pull a list from Google Maps. We're going to look at, let's say I just want to know my house is in this range, right? So let's just say I just want to know where all of the breweries are. And I know there's a lot. But it's going to pull up this list. It's going to have all these, all these people. And it might be kind of hard to see, but... Um, underneath 
where the recording information is, there's like multiple pages of data, right? So what I want is to pull all these people to a spreadsheet because maybe I want to go through and I want to just pull everybody. Maybe I want to filter by like what their average reviews are or, you know, maybe I just want to see all of them or, or whatever. So we are going to go to data miner and we're just going to do this Google maps list scrape. We could do the profile one. I don't actually know what that looks like, but platforms like data miner are cool because you can actually create your own. Typically they're called like recipes and that's just telling it, go here, do this, go here, do that, go here, do this. Um, but there's also a lot of like pre-written ones in data miner, which is really nice. So you don't necessarily have to even go through and do that, which can be kind of a tedious process. Um, usually far less tedious than actually still scraping the information yourself. So it's still worth doing that, but let's just see what this profile one does. So it's going to start up. It's going to run this list and we're going to press scrape and it should start filling in this information. So we'll do the list scrape. So see how it has pulled up all of these already. We're going to turn on this next page automation and we are going to scrape 10 pages of data. And it's going to basically just go through one by one and add stuff in here. Now, what's nice is that data miner does not require you to do nothing on other pages. So you can have this going here and then in a separate window, it's probably best to keep up, like to keep it in separate windows as opposed to separate tabs. But what's really nice is now we don't have to go through and do this and I can do other stuff. I can, you know, manage my calendar, fuck around or I don't know, do whatever, because even having a robot doing this, even if I'm doing nothing, the robot is still going to be far faster. So it's still far more efficient. So it's going through every time it gets to the end of the list, it's going to uh, just go to the next page and continue to scrape and it'll get all that information. You see it's adding them to this list over here, which we can then just export to an Excel file. So that's kind of the basics on browser bots. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do with it. Nico is probably, Nico and Jane probably are, are far more advanced in using like data miner specifically or a couple other browser bots. There's a couple others that I really like, one being Axiom. It's easier to program in the like repeatable tasks. So it looks like it just finished. I know that Tempe has like 10 billion, so we're just going to go ahead and stop it. We don't need to pull more than 300 breweries nearby me, but we're just going to export this list, export as a CSV. Okay, maybe I didn't download it right, but whatever, it doesn't really actually matter that much. So this is basically, I did the exact same thing, but instead of looking up breweries, I just looked up manufacturers. But as you can see, this can be pretty useful. So I don't actually have a premium version of a data miner, although we do have premium versions of data miner. So if you need like more of the uh, advanced information, we can definitely get that. So it's not going to show me their addresses because it says that's a premium feature, but whatever. In this case, what I care about is I want to see the business name and I want to see what category they're in. So for us as an organization that pulls and scrapes an awful lot of data, uh, this is hugely useful that we can go to basically any site that's going to have a list and export that information to something we can more easily work with. So, Google Maps is an example, like let's say you want to just 
find something nearby you in a specific category. Great, you can export that as a complete list. Uh, here we can, oh, it did, it just added my breweries to this. Oh, okay. So we have all of our breweries that are going in and it's just searching for all of them nearby us. So this is pretty much everything that's gonna come through. We can categorize by like, let's say we wanna look at only the ones that have a certain number of filters. We went over this last time, but we can just create a quick pivot table and sort by uh, average rating and average category. So maybe we wanna have like our category and then our business name and our value would be the rating. So now we can filter by like, let's say we want to see, you know, all of the bars and their average rating. And maybe we want to like sort by the rating. And instead of a sum, because there might be multiples in there, we'll just do max. But that's pretty much like the gist. Uh, we'll filter everything in here. Actually, probably we want to do that. Backwards. So if we want to look at any of the brew pubs, and I probably won't go to Santan Brewery, but maybe I'll go to Hop Central Brewing Company in Tap Room because it has really high reviews. So that's just kind of how we can export mass amounts of data from the internet without uh, breaking too much of a sweat. Hopefully, this is helpful. Um, there's so many applications of browser bots that I can't possibly cover all of them. For our purposes, we primarily use them for data scraping, although like I kind of was showing earlier, we can use it for a lot of other stuff. So, you know, engagement, uh, I highly encourage all of you to look through the Google Chrome extensions list for bots that can do different things because it uh, is pretty helpful, honestly, and there's a lot of different things you can have. So I have a lot of extensions, as you can see. And several of them are like, they automatically do stuff or I have options to just like, you know, ha have robots do the work for me, 